situation uh, is pre-existing by somebody Mr. else. Mr. Heiner, shaking your head <clears throat> is not appropriate here. Council's deliberating. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. But uh, I'd like to pose some of those kinds of issues to the, to the council. Uh, is this place different than a church? Uh, or it, if we get all the, the traffic in, in two or three days of a church on the weekends, or they have, they have schools, or other kinds of facilities. I guess I'd like to weigh in on the traffic issues. Uh, like Mr. Johnson, Mr. Turner talking about, and Mr. Gear, the, the big trucks entering, exiting, the facility. This is in a deep area of the residential zone, and the streets weren't designed for big trucks, big vehicles. Uh, the fire trucks and the ambulances that have to show up are going to have an impact on that neighborhood. One of the things I would be concerned about is if there was a fire there, this facility does not have a good access in and out for four or five fire trucks to show up. That, that would be a problem. So. Yeah, I, th I think that. The fire department will review the final plans, and um, they're pretty independent as they review the, the plans, so that's not going to be an issue. They'll be required to meet the fire code. Mr. Mayor? So, oh, I'm sorry, Brad. Brad. So, a fire code, code? Let me make one response. The, the owner claims that there's only one truck delivery a week for food, and now whether that's true or not, I don't know, but people keep talking about trucks in this place. I don't see a lot of trucks. I did get a comment the other day about ambulances. There may be more ambulances in this place than normal because these people are advanced in age. But I know lots of neighborhoods that are a lot of people are advanced in age. Okay, anyway, so I can finish my comment real quick. It's those, and also during the construction phase, it would be very difficult. I know that uh, public works would try to work with that, but um, whenever there's usually a big construction project, there's trucks that have to park all kinds of places. That would be real difficult. Just something to consider. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Gear. Uh, I guess to, re to respond to. State your name and address for the record, please. I'm Frank Spargo, uh, 1408 11th Street in Accordance. I previously submitted some information to you by email, and I have to apologize to you. I didn't realize the formatting would get so messed up that it would be very, very difficult to read. Um, I have some better printed copies of that, if I may some, just give them to Ryan or Marsha, and we'll make sure the council gets it. I hope that makes it just a little bit easier to read some of those numbers because there's a lot of them in there. I'm not going to go over all those tonight. No, you're not going to have time. <laughs> <laughs> How much time do I have, sir? Um, why don't you take five minutes? I probably won't even use that. Okay. Uh, I want to touch on a couple of highlights. And as I read through the RCWs, and I'm sure I'll get corrected by our attorneys or Mr. Larson or someone like that. It says in there that the cities, local municipalities, other jurisdictions must or shall prepare a plan. And shall is, means you will. It just doesn't say you can ignore it. Um, and it also says in there, again, just a part of it, is that the numbers need to balance as nearly equal as possible. Now, one of the things I noticed on the first slide Mr. Larson had up there, you know, a deviation of minus 6.75%. You know, that's, that's actually a recommendation from the consultant. So it's not Mr. Larson's numbers, it's the consultant. Well, those, those were based on the actual census numbers. And so I was just talking about those ideals. And so if you follow through on the 10% variation that's theoretically permissible by the courts, that means you could go as low as a minus 10% in one ward and as much as a plus 10% in a second ward. That's variation from the ideal. That's a 20% difference in population between two wards. But that's not what we have here. That's not what you have here. I'm just trying to show what that means. You know, if you ignore it this year, it could be as much as that next year. As I calculate the numbers, the difference between Ward 2 and Ward 3 now 
is about six or 13.6%. I think I included that number in there someplace in the statistics. By the way, I promised the people at some Amish data systems that any errors in those numbers are mine, not theirs, <laughs> that I passed out earlier. Um, I spent about maybe 10 minutes talking to the folks at some Amish data systems. In about one minute, they came up with a single scenario that would bring it more into balance. It only took a moment. And if the city were to request that kind of redistricting scenario with other refinements, I mean, I mean, he just picked out one census block, just one, to move. Uh, with that kind of effort, it's only $250. That's all he would charge the city, which in the scheme of the size of your budget is relatively small, I believe. Uh, could I just respond to that it, it means changing all the maps for everything that we have so it's more than 250 dollars well it does mean that yeah that's correct and, and it's an additional cost with the county but it also means a better representation of the people in the wards well this, this is my comment yeah no let go me, ahead let me have a chance to say what i absolutely want to say. i'm just t i'm just telling you that it doesn't mean just 250 dollars i i understand that okay. you also have to work with Scott i'll worry about the budget go ahead well i worry about it too it's my city too okay and you also have to work with Skagit County. And I went over to the election office and asked them what impact a change, this is in response to Councilwoman uh, Richardson's question, what impact that would have on the precincts. And from the election office, they said, we don't really care. You can do what you want. We'll either change our precincts or we won't. You know, the geographical information systems they have now, the other computer systems, everyone will get the right ballot, regardless of whether precincts match up with ward boundaries. But the election supervisor might choose to actually change the precincts. Uh, they just weren't sure. He's on vacation until tomorrow, so I couldn't talk to him. Other uh, jurisdictions, on another point, were able to get down less than 2% variation between any of their districts with very small expenditure funds. And in fact, it, they were really proud down at Sammamish Data Systems of what they did in Mount Vernon, where they got down their three wards, no more than three people different between wards, which is just about equal, pretty darn close. That cost them only $250. I guess I think, and I recommend to you, as I have already in writing, try redistricting. Try to get it equal so that all the people in the city of Anacortes have equal representation. That's a basic, I'm an idealist, and that's a basic foundation for our, the way we live here, and that's all I'm asking. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Spigot. Uh, Mr. Spargo, you talked to our consultant down there at Sammamish Data. Did they indicate to you why they recommended that we do nothing? That was their recommendation. I specifically asked him that, mm -hmm. and he, said, he did not say he made that recommendation. But he didn't really answer my question either. It was sort of, you know, why not do it type thing. Uh, he, he just didn't, did not recall making that recommendation. That's all I can say. And he didn't, I didn't pursue it. Because I don't know what was said before, or what the staff talked about, or what the context was exactly. Okay, great. Thank you. Anyone else wish to testify? There's, I'll be happy to answer any questions if anyone has any. I'm just, uh, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Johnson. Quite grateful for the uh, research you did on on this. Um, it'd be interesting Thank to you. find out uh, one day maybe what the un unintended consequences would be that you point out, Mr. Mayor, of having to redo all that. Well, well there are others, and I'll share those with okay. you when Thanks. we finish here. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> uh, Mr. Mayor, Council, congratulations on finally getting through that last one. Um, I was gonna bring a presentation down here tonight and show you some pictures, but I decided not to do that. I'm just not up to it. I would like to plant a seed 
to think about over the next decade because it's probably not possible to do something what I'm going to talk about as quickly as you need to. Under your present system, it's entirely possible for you to have five council members living on the same side of the street in the same block. Terry, could you kind of keep it to the redistricting issue? Well, it is about that. Um, well, if you, you know. You, you know, do you, do you want me to uh, continue giving my presentation, or would you like me to just to go away? I just want you to focus on the issue. At I'm hand. getting to it. Good, thank you. Thank you. I prefer, I think, in the grand scheme of things, to see the town go to seven wards. I think it provides a lot of benefits in some respects. That's really not the issue here tonight, Tim. The is issue is redistricting, Mr. Mayor, and I'm going to be heard on it. Terry, Dean, would you please stay focused? Right now we're looking at whether or not to change or uh, I know to exact, keep, I know exactly keep what you're three doing. wards the same. That's the issue. I today. know exactly what you're doing. You're talking about redistricting three wards. And I'm saying there may be some better way if, to if consider. You wanna, if you want to submit a different proposal at a different time, that would be appropriate. Tonight we're talking about these three wards. Well, since I can't speak while you're interrupting, I'll go home. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Mr. Christensen. Anyone else? 